Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another episode of the Wealth Building CPA webinar series. I'm your host, Yasmin Razak, and I have the pleasure of having Anthony DiPietro on the call with me. Hello, Anthony. Hi, Yasmin. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for joining us. Before we get started, here's a little bit about Ebere Okoye, the Wealth Building CPA. Ebere is an active real estate investor and the founder of Wealth Building CPA. She owns real estate investments in five states across the eastern coast. Her company has helped over 5,000 people just like you prepare their taxes online and offline. Her greatest joy comes from helping clients, friends, and associates become free of financial stress. So if that's something that sounds appealing to you, um, give a Barry a call and book a free consultation today. Now, regular listeners to this webinar series know that we usually talk about tax-related information, real estate investing deals, and other ways of building wealth. Um, but this episode is going to be slightly different. It's going to focus more on the spiritual side of things. As many of you know, a Barry Coy is very spiritual person, and that's basically the main thing that drives and motivates her to build a successful business is so that she can, um, uh, you know, follow through on, on the word and help people achieve the best that they want in their lives. And she was moved by Anthony's story um, on how he was inspired to take his spirituality and use it to an, in a positive manner, and obviously investing is part of that as well. But on this call today, we'll fo focus more about his faith and how it impacts his ambitions. So, Anthony, thank you so much for agreeing to share it with us today. I know you were a little reluctant at first when I very first approached you because you felt you didn't have much to sort of uh, shout from the rooftops, but she was ob obviously inspired enough to, to reach out to you. Could you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your, your faith and how it's brought you to where you are now? A little bit of background about you. I know you're a family man. Yeah. You know, my faith is more of a recent discovery, uh, reconnecting to my spirituality through Christ and the community church that I attended on uh, Easter Day, it was a really special day. It was the first time going to this church, and it was such a moving experience for me. You know, it was, it's actually, it was actually my birthday on that day as well. So, you know, the energy, it was the first time there, so the energy was just incredible. The live music, it's a very tight-knit community church, and it just struck me. And, you know, I, I really was embracing it while sitting in there and just overcoming with emotion but really just listening to the pastor and, and talking with people afterward. And, you know, it was a community right away. And I was just really joyful and thankful. But I left, and for the weeks after that, I still kept going back every week, having conversation, meeting more people. And it just, I realized, you know, growing up a certain way with religion, you know, it didn't, I never defined it and put true meaning behind it. And this really struck me. And, you know, there was a song that they sang that day. You know, it's, it's a song by a group named Passion. And, you know, they just have some lyrics in there where, you know, was buried beneath my shame and couldn't carry, you know, carry that kind of weight. And, you know, they just talk about being in a tomb. And then I met you and you called my name and I came out of the grave. And really, and that's really what I had shared with the Barry. And, you know, because it was, my life was accelerating and, you know, I started the new business and I had all these great things going, but I had a void. And then this happened. And that void was just totally filled. And I just felt an abundance and a blessing just come down. It just, things just started to line up. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Okay, well, sounds great. Sort of like an epiphany um, that probably has been building up your entire life until that point. So it's wonderful to hear that you experienced that. Now, if we could go back a little bit um, to tell us about your career. What have you been doing up until now? What made you sort of change direction and, and decide to look into multiple streams of income? Well, I was in a business as a partnership for about 15 years. 
And last summer, I just wasn't living my purpose. You know, I have young children, and I wasn't the father that I wanted to be. I wasn't the husband that I wanted to be. And the business, it, was a, it turned into a paycheck more than purpose. And I prepared myself to exit my business, and I did so at the end of last year and selected to go. I've always loved real estate. You know, I, I, I like the, the buy and hold, uh, the wholesaling. You know, so I really immersed myself the first part of the year in learning this business. You know, I set myself up to be able to study deeply and kind of rediscover, rekindle my relationships with my family. And real estate for me and, and starting this journey really was the time that I needed to hit the reset button in life, although I'm a little – a little bit older, and you know things are already moving. I've got a lot of responsibilities, but real estate investing to me was just something that I could use as a vehicle because it was all about getting it right. And I had been around the Rios for the past couple of years. I enjoyed the energy. I understood it. I wasn't after the quick cat, you know, quick fix for money or get rich quick or anything like that. You know, I wasn't delusional. And, you know, when it comes to that, because I had run a business, you know, as a business partner for 15 years, and I knew what it took. It, it takes lots of hard work. But I wanted to do it differently. I wanted to have my family and come first and let that dictate versus business being the, the, the end-all, be-all. You know, I kind of reshifted the order of things, and um, that was pretty instrumental for me to decide what to do. Okay, so would you say, um, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would you say that, as with a lot of people, if your faith was sort of on the back burner for a long time, and then you realized that something had to change? Yeah, the, the faith was always present. You know, I've always done the right things. I've always been kind and, you know, gentle with people. And the faith... You know, when that Easter day on April 16th, it just, it all came together for me. That was the missing link for me. And, you know, I, I met a Barry back in February. And, you know, one of the things that struck me early on is I knew she had faith. And, you know, her quote in her email signature is, I think it's, you know, my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And that, her rock is Jesus. And, you know, that, that kind of attracted me to thinking, you know, that's not something that I can really say. And I think that kind of started the, the journey of trying to find it. And, and then it was just a, you know, it was perfect timing. My heart was wide open to accept it, and there it came. Okay. Now, you say that obviously it has a big impact on your career. How would you say that you apply your faith in sort of day-to-day -day management of business? From a day-to-day -day standpoint, it's more of a guidance. It's like, it's, it's like a GPS. It's guiding me to do the right things for the people that I want to help. You know, I'm, I'm focused my, in my business. And in pro, I selected probate because it, these are people that really do need help. They, they, they need problems solved. I would like to help people genuinely. And, you know, here lately I've had the opportunity um, that helps some people in some very difficult situations. And, you know, the feedback was very positive. They, they heard me loud and clear. We talked. You know, I was able to bring a little bit of the faith to the conversation because they come from that background. Um, but on a day-to-day, -day, it's just it's my moral compass. It's my GPS that's really guiding me to make sure that I'm operating with integrity, honor, and just serving those that need help or just need guidance. Okay, and talking about your career, you told me just before we started this call that um, you actually closed a deal recently. Would you like to share anything about that? Yeah, and you know, this is some of the kind of divine events. I, I had said something to uh, someone here recently, just this, the other day, that you know, ever since I really affirmed my religious beliefs and a lot of things started to come together. And I had a deal, I had a customer reach out to me through my website. She was, she had a property in North Carolina. She was in a really bad situation, needed the money right away. And I was able to, you know, I drove four hours to go see the property, put it under contract and closed it. 
and then come to find out she has another property which is local as well. I went and I'm helping her currently on working on that one, and then I have some probates that are coming in. So, you know, from the time that you and I had an email exchange to, to even do this interview, all these fantastic things just started happening. And, you know, I know I've been working hard, but there are divine things happening accordingly to, to really put things in motion. So my business is just all of a sudden all of the hard work and everything that I've been doing has just started to kind of open up and everything's starting to work now. And I don't think it's chance. I, I think it's just when your mind starts to focus on all of the right things to collectively and you put your spirituality with it, it all starts to work. And it's and for me, my belief is God is is blessing me with these things and I'm happy because of it. I mean, I think I'm deserving of it and God is appreciative that I'm, you know, professing and I'm working hard and I'm doing the right things and now it's time to get some of the right results. Well, that's great and it's important that you said that word, um, happy. I think that's important for us to all remember that, you know, it's it's all well and good to get bogged down in our ambitions and the busyness of life, but are we really happy? And I think that you know, you said it right there. It's already brought you happiness regardless of anything else that happens. So that's great to hear. Um, now, you said you only met a Barry earlier this year. Is that correct? Correct. So how has um, meeting her, and I don't know if you've done any work with her, how has that sort of helped you personally? How has she helped me personally? Yeah. Well, you know, from the initial time of the phone call and then coming to her office to sit down, I mean, originally I was introduced to her, um, and it was, you know, taxes are coming due, I need to sit down and start doing this, and then we started talking about what her business offers collectively, and, you know, there was it was a solid connection from her. I mean, she's a very genuine person. I mean, she's got a great heart, and, you know, the wealth-building component, you know, I'm trying to build it, and what better way to get yourself properly prepared is to align with someone that knows what to do and how to do it very well, and, you know, she has her anchor and her rock, and, you know, again, kind of that quote that she uses, I mean, it's powerful when you read that kind of thing. You know she's got good moral compass, and, and she'll guide through there, so my initial intent with getting with their, her teams and herself was, you know, get my business properly lined up and then just here lately, you know, it's been more contact and, you know, good consultation. But, you know, she's just a brilliant mind to, to help build your business. But, you know, on our call when we had our mid-year call, and that's when I had shared about my spiritual awakening. And, you know, it was just, it was positive. I mean, it's, pretty rare that you would talk to your CPA about your spiritual awakening. And she, <laughs> That's true. She, yeah, and, it, you know, I don't really remember how the conversation came about, but I felt safe to talk to her and share kind of an experience about it. And, you know, obviously it kind of led to this call. Oh, well, good. That's great to hear. That's really good to hear. Now, what would you say to people listening in about the importance of having a vision? a vision for your life, whatever that may be. Why do you think that's important? I think having a vision is, is the roadmap. It's, you know, it's kind of what you build off of, and it has to be what's important to you personally and professionally. And I don't think you can find abundance if you don't build the framework. And you have to have the pillars. They have to be around love, spirituality, you know, your health, your family, your community, and then it's your business. You know, the business is kind of the, the trailing of it. And, you know, if, if a lot of people think that it's the money. Oh, I need to focus on the money. No, you've got to get these other things really down first. And then everything else will start to take care of itself. But if you let your driving force, you know, business will be driven by all the first, those other components in life. And then it will serve your mission in your business accordingly. So for me, I had to get these areas defined and understood to get to my business goals. And, you know, I, I work diligently on a weekly basis to define very clearly to myself all of the things that are important. And, you know, it's pretty static 
when it comes to your spirituality, you know, you're, you're setting goals around it. But, you know, the vision, it just has to be crystal clear because it guides you. It tells you where you're trying to get to. And it, it has to be led properly. Um, so vision is, you know, there's so much talk about vision, and it, it's such a brilliant thing if you build it properly. And I, I really believe that it has to be built off of, you know, love, the spirituality, health, family, community, and the business will take care of everything else at the end of the day. So you can do more of that around those key things. Okay, well, they're great, great words to hear. Um, and you're living and breathing it right now, so you're an excellent example for us. Thank you for sharing that. And before we finish the call today, Anthony, I know that um, there are people who would be interested in doing business with you, whether that's bringing you deals, doing joint ventures, or what have you. So how can they get in touch with you? You know, I have uh, my direct phone number. Um, people can feel free to contact me on that. And that's 571-354-7116. Okay, that's great. So the number is up there on the screen. So if you're interested in doing business with Anthony, if his um, spiritual uh, beliefs and his, his the way he, just, he chooses to live his life is something that aligns with yours, and you think this would be a good um, uh, partnership or combination, then please, by all means, do give him a call. And Anthony, I would like to thank you so much for spending time with us. I know that we've asked you some quite personal questions because, you know, what, what people believe is very personal and private. So I do really appreciate you opening up to us. Well, thank you, Yasmin. I appreciate you uh, doing this interview, and you know, I'm glad to share my story. It's uh, doesn't feel personal. I just I hope somebody hears it and they can understand that you know there are lots of great things that can happen and you know if you find wherever you find it it it's, it can be through a, your faith and all of these things start to line up. So I really appreciate you taking the time to to do this interview. That's great. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day, Anthony. All right, you do the same. Thank you. Mm -hmm.